Cell 411 is a great free app for Android and iPhone. It allows you to set up public and private cells for dealing with crime, emergencies, setting up neighborhood watch, activism, and even protecting your kids from bullies on the street or at school. Cell 411 gives your cells turn-by-turn -turn directions to your location with one touch on your phone. There is also a Bluetooth panic button available that can be worn on your wrist, belt, or around your neck. Cell 411 has real-time chat for each alert so you can discuss the incident with family or friends in real-time video streaming. The video is stored on Cell 411's servers so your evidence cannot be deleted if your phone is taken or destroyed. Cell 411 has decentralized ride-sharing that allows for payment in any form – crypto, barter, silver, cash, etc. Cell 411 does not take a cut of your fare. Get Cell 411 free on Google Play and the iTunes Store or go to GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com. You know, clean shaves are for fascists. Everyone knows it, man. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, then what the hell am I doing with a beard? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were... Uh... If, Facebook, if Facebook is any indication, I am unequivocally a fascist, or at least that's what everybody tells me. We are just some modern-day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 135th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more that information about this Brazil. at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as almost always by Dave and Andre. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on, man? Just having a good day. Yeah, chilling, chilling. And uh, as we are recording this, this will be our last show that we record in 2017. Probably won't actually. Woo! Make, New make, Year! <laughs> yeah, probably won't actually make it out to everybody until the second of next year. Uh, by the time I actually put when it out. When did we start this show? What what year? March of uh, 2015, I guess. Yeah, because it'll be three years. Wow. Of, three years in March. And uh, hell yeah, wow. yeah. We're uh, slowly working our oh. way up to our 150th episode because yeah, we'll be yeah we've missed a couple episodes. So if we kept on track, we would have hit 150 by like I guess early February or something. But so we'll hit it around our three year mark. But anyway, well, it's, it's hard. I mean, just to be able to keep this show up as we're as we keep going, it's you know it's just always been a challenge to to keep every week going and going and going. You know, holidays come up, people get sick. You know, kids, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, we said that. So, we, we said, I think we said I'm that. I'm just glad we keep trucking along, man. <laughs> I'm glad there's still listeners out there. Yeah, I'm surprised we uh, keep all three of them trucking along. Yeah, hey, we well, <laughs> e e even if only three people are listening, more more than that are donating. So I'll take that any day of the week. You know, hey, if you're not even listening, to it, you're still throwing money at us. And I did. I think I did mention last yes. week. And uh, I forgot to look it up, and I believe it was actually Eric Haley uh, who became our latest patron. So thank you for your service, Eric. I appreciate that. I did say I would look that up and, and mention it this week. Uh, we all appreciate that very much that uh, we got another patron on board, and hopefully we can lock in a couple of more. But we, uh, yeah, we, we we were talking about this whole you know life getting in the way. I think that's been the theme of this year, actually. <laughs> which is uh, true enough. Which is kind of why I, I, I said to you guys yesterday when we were discussing the show for tonight that my idea because we've never really done it before is you know pretty much just wrap the year up with a kind of a year in review type thing i guess because uh, it's just the three of us tonight we had nick hazelton on last week which was great but uh if we're just going to finish off the year with just the three of us we might as well do like a kind of year in review and you know like i said that kind of has been our mantra for the year it's just life has gotten in the way constantly between, you know, my, my me trying to shut down my business and move out of here, and then obviously everything else that happened to me this year, Andre going into law school, mm -hmm. Dave getting the farm up and running full, you know, full swing and stuff like that. You know, we've we've literally had life 
altering things happen uh, pretty regularly all year long. And uh, yeah, yeah, we sure have. We sure have. Yeah, uh, Andre's finally growing his beard back out. So I mean, give it up. He's stepping back into manhood, boys. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, Dave. Yeah, we were we were we were talking. Fa- Andre and I were talking facial hair before the show, and Dave stepped away for a little while. I was actually, you know, clean shaves are for fascists. Everyone knows it, man. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. then what the hell am I doing with a beard? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were uh, if Facebook. If Facebook is any indication, I am unequivocally a fascist, or at least that's what everybody tells me. When yeah, when you're a mouth. Nazi fascist, uh, white supremacist from Romania. So yeah, it's yes, it's 100%, easy. 100%, 100%, 100 percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, everyone wants to just go to the easy, quick. You know, this is I can put this guy in a box and call him this instead of actually having a discussion about it. And it feels better to call someone a racist or whatever because, you know, it gets your jimmies off or whatever than to actually have a, a discussion. So it's like, what do you do? <laughs> Don't bother. Well, it's it's always been my opinion that if you just uh, ignore them or treat it like it's not an insult and just kind of move forward like, okay, well, so where's your argument, though? Well, it's like, yeah, your your guilt trip is not an argument. <clears throat> Sorry. Um yeah, well, listen. When you when you guys get on my level and you can uh, you you can you can be called all of those things and a degenerate commie, sometimes by the same person, you know, then come talk to me because that's the kind of place I've. <laughs> I oh, think I, I saw I a fire have fire. Totally, I have totally been called a degenerate I, commie. I've, I've been a, hilarious. I've been a white nationalist, fascist, or no, I, I white supremacist. I've been labeled a lot lately, but also calling me a, a, a degenerate commie in the same, in like almost in the same sentence. It's like really. How do all of those <laughs> things go together at the same time? I mean, I've gotten my share of you know both sides of it, but I mean, it's, it's like it's re- it's. Re- I'm re- obviously talking to an angry person who just wants to yell. Well, yeah, because <laughs> it's reached insane proportions. I mean, I can't even remember the comment I made the other day that got this. This uh, she was obviously some uh, conspiracy uh, conspiracy nut. You know, one of those people who takes like every conspiracy. 100% seriously from the get go. You have to and No, we, you have to take them as a grain of salt. Uh, yes, you Come do, on, but she up. but you you know the per- type of person I'm talking about and she was very angry and I don't even remember it was somebody else's post. It, it might have even been uh, Claire Bernesh's. And I just happened to pop on and made a comment and like her immediate response was, "Oh, and now the white and now that now the white supremacists show up." And I'm like, not only did my comment have nothing to you? do with race whatsoever, <laughs> I'm like, where in anywhere, like in my pictures, is in anything does it, it suggest at all? Just because I happen to have white skin is like that. Is is that the level of insanity we've reached at this point? That literally, I'm oh getting, hell yes, it has. Well, I, okay, oh, I, I have seen that. I have seen that from certain fa- factions, but not this particular faction. Like this, just ramp up right away, and I'm just like, <laughs> all right, uh, I'm, well, I'm a white supremacist. And, and who are you again? Yeah. Who are you? I don't know you. <sighs> so many people want to call people. They just want to slam that box. Like I said, slam that box shut. And I think a lot of our discussions this year have been about this, about how it almost isn't even worth it to debate people anymore because they're so defensive in such in a primed uh, debate, you know, uh, or, or argue mode that they're not ever going to let their defenses down to get any actual, uh, you know, intellect you know, in their brain. Uh, so you're fighting a brick wall. So like, it's like that by and large, that's been my experience too. But every once in a while you get lucky and you get a, you actually have a decent conversation with a person. So, I think I mean, it depends on if you can get sincere with them, right? Most people, yeah, exactly. view everything online is insincere. You know, like a robot could be saying this to me, you know? Well, yeah, we, and you're right. We have touched Who's to say a robot's not talking right now. <laughs> Shh. Mm. Don't let I that don't cat know, out of the bag Andre. yet, Andre. But yeah, we, you, <laughs> you, you, you're right, Dave. We have we've talked about that a bunch. I mean, we were touching on it a, a whole lot in in the recent episode <clears> with, <throat> with Merrick Van Landingham and, and Jason Booth about mm-hmm. you know this whole idea and you know there are, there are ways to go about it, but you know largely we've discussed this. I mean, you you've although you, I mean you made the bold claim the other day that it was your last Facebook post, and I thought you were disappearing forever. Although I did catch you liking one of my posts yesterday, so I guess you're not completely gone. But <laughs> um, but we've all well, talked- like uh, I. Go ahead. A bunch of Christmas photos got tagged, so I just topped on. I, I'm trying my heart. Like obviously, like Facebook is kind of an addiction, 
and because especially when you run a lot of pages you run a lot of groups you have multiple accounts you're you know a lot of people depend on you know you putting out memes or you know stuff like that as far as keeping effort post spread and stuff like that like there's a lot that goes into spreading content so people see it and uh i i just don't have time for it anymore it's not it's not that i'm oh i, I know like if, saying fuck you to the man or whatever like i just <laughs> it's like a roi of value adjustment uh value you know adjustment here that's going on that i just don't have like facebook's not hitting an roi that I, that everything else in my life is so like it's happened I'm I'm having to walk away. So like I've kind of banned myself from posting. The the only thing the only reason I don't want to deactivate my account is because a lot of pages would go down too. Uh and get unpublished eventually from it. And also uh a, they will ghost like stuff and comment and share stuff on your page if it's deactivated. Uh they Facebook does this to keep their numbers up so they can fake sell stuff to advertisers. So it's like you either have your Facebook account or they have it. <laughs> well, we can't let that happen. But no, I, I get I I mean, I get what you're saying. And I I mean I sorry to go on that long rant no, there. I just wanted to explain it. No, it's fine. It's that's that's what this is all about today, Dave. I mean I guess I guess this I be my I got banned on Twitter, so <laughs> did, did you really I said, All right, well I'm done with that. Yeah, I was in that huge wave. I got banned. So. Oh, I'm not. I have. I don't even use Twitter enough to even notice. You well, when you tweet at the ADL, you really are asking for it. I guess. <laughs> tweeted who? But wait, tweeted who? Uh, the ADL. What's the ADL? Um, the uh, Anti Defamation. Oh, League. okay, okay. Yeah, it wasn't the acronym wasn't sticking out to me for some reason. But oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I, you're, I, you're gonna get banned. I like I said. I I barely. You know, I check in on Twitter maybe once a week. I remember to. <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, as you know, the, the whole return on investment thing is a really good point. I mean, unless you're somebody who is using uh, social media, you know, even more specifically Facebook for marketing purposes, which I know there's plenty of people who do. I mean, Tom Woods talks about uh, this all the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I got a friend, I, I'm not going to name him, but he makes like 200 grand just off a of t-shirt sales a year, just off of different various Facebook pages he runs. So like, well, no, that's what I'm saying. In I mean, I get it. Well, no, I just, I'm not, I don't have that time to set all that up. Well, no, but that's, that, that was my point. Unless you're one of those people, then you're almost definitely not going to get a very high ROI whatsoever off of using social media. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not the, really. Not the, really. The point you made it about you're the, either the customer or the product, one of the two. Well, you're definitely yeah, you're definitely the product. But the <laughs> the what should we call it? The the other point you made about you know saying that it was like an addiction. Uh, I I wholeheartedly believe that. I mean, I've been listening to a lot of different stuff recently uh, i read one article it was a couple of weeks ago i think we i think i might have talked about it on the fiends too and it, there was a video mm -hmm. attached with a former programmer for facebook and a lot of people have been coming out i mean what's, what's the one guy sean parker or is he the guy from napster i don't remember um what should we call it? Uh, but a bunch, of, but a bunch of different people. Uh, Actually, no. I think Sean Parker was with Facebook. Why does Napster feel so old? Because it was uh, a long time. I remember. Dude, it is. I remember downloading. <laughs> me, me too, man. Me too. Wow. But, but my, uh, my my point was that there there's a lot of people, a lot of former Facebook employees <laughs> coming out now, and all kind of saying the same thing. And this one video, I can't remember the guy's name. It was some, uh, you know. Middle Eastern Indian name. Yeah, it was given like a talk at like Harvard or something. Right? Yeah, or, yeah, or, but it was like a, 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 a college of some sort. Yeah, I think it was. I think it might have been Stanford. But he, you know, and he obviously, you know, he he definitely had some, I guess, leftist leanings or whatever. But a lot of his points were pretty, you know, pretty powerful. And he was talking about the fact that I, like I said, I've heard a lot of other former Facebook employees kind of saying things along a similar lines. Like they almost feel guilty for helping create this thing and they all use the same type of language like addiction like it has created this addiction because it's this dopamine rush that people get and it's nano dopamine rush but yeah too. but every every little like share comment whatever you know uh you know mm -hmm. uh, emoji you get and all your stuff gif all these things you get these things it, it, every one of these is like this little mini dopamine hit to people's and and it's really creating this artificial reality which so you know we've that's that well that's facebook's end goal right they want you like to have that vr headset on and it recording your entire face 
and it literally being Facebook, like a live video of your face and you being in a room talking to other people with their live face. Uh, so like that's that's the end goal of that. And I, I just I, I don't want any part of it. I mean, I don't either using it for propaganda and 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 memetic purposes i get it like but when it's it's going to get to a point where that's not what facebook facebook's going to be used for and I, I i won't have a part of it so it's i i we people don't want to talk about facebook like it is social media but like 90 percent of all social media like attention or you know clicks or time that is spent on social media sites is all facebook or instagram which is owned by facebook so yeah, yeah, you have this situation where you're. It's almost pointless to talk about, not talk about Facebook like it isn't social media. You know what I'm saying? And it is. It is like a, an addiction. It's like a mini dopamine rush. You get all those notifications and everything, especially when you when you run a shit ton of pages. Like if you don't filter down your notifications, you can't. You don't even know what you're looking at. You know, it's like I can't keep up with the, the conversation I'm currently trying to have with somebody. Well, that's why I have all those things turned off, even for our own groups. I think I don't think I get notifications for anything except direct contact with people, because <laughs> I just have no desire to look at all that stuff. But yeah, it's like I said, it's it, it seems to be a common theme that it, it really has you know stepped up this level, and so many people, you know, wh whether whether that is Facebook's end goal, what you're describing. I mean, it seems. I mean, it seems to fit with everything else. I'm about ninety percent on that. Well, it, I mean, it go it I mean, go because yeah, VR I, I chat do, rooms are going to be yeah yeah it, no it, no VR chat rooms are the future. Like, let's oh, not sure. fool ourselves. Oh no I think no, Facebook's trying to get in there and monopolize. Well, of course, and, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I was that's what I was getting at. That it, it definitely seems plausible because that's you know along the same type of lines of what Amazon's trying to do in in a bunch of other markets, and basically that's what the, a lot of these bigger companies are currently trying to do is they've set themselves I mean, up already. Just think about they want to corner these markets and and ha and have this mm -hmm. stuff because. You know, it will it it will likely be the wave of the future, especially with the attention spans ever decreasing for people as a whole, mm -hmm. and you know, and more and more people living. You know, didn't we name a show title a show about this a couple of weeks a couple of weeks ago about or say something about this about living vicariously through through the alter egos online? Yeah, that was during the conversation with American American Jason, I believe. Yeah. And it's more people yep, are drifting yep. that, and even even if Facebook is fudging their numbers to a certain extent, well, the it, connection power is going to be undeniable. You know, no one can be in this all these places at once. I mean, just take for instance, if VR goes real hard mainstream, me, you, and Andre could be sitting on a VR stage right now doing this podcast live with an entire audience that we could be also looking at that could be watching us live in this whole VR you know essential universe, and we could be doing these podcasts live. So like that's so cool, <laughs> you know. It's going to be undeniable. It's, I am, in my opinion, it's all who controls it and, and who's going to control it at first. But I, I can see Facebook trying to, to corner it, man. I oh, just, I'm sure I they can't. will, and that's and because that, that's like the 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 next stage for for uh, social media interaction, right? And it's funny because Second Life kind of you know sort of tried to use that model, but without the VR immersion. And I mean, it's, it was moderately successful, but can you imagine integrating Facebook interactions in real time in VR? That'd be pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine watching two people argue and be able to just hop in the thing and be able to sit there and like have everyone be commenting about something. It, it would change the way everything was done drastically. I don't, I, I don't, I can't even really ponder it, but. It's almost like that app idea I was talking about how like if, if, if you could just get in, pick your city and it just randomized it all and no one knew who was saying it truly, essentially like a, a random image board for every city, every town decentra decentralized. I mean, that, that, that thing, that would have the same effect as VR is going to have on social media and everything really. I mean, customer support is going to be you and another person sitting in a room essentially but you're not going to be in the same room. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm excited about it. I I'm excited for full immersion VR. That's it's going to be really cool. I I've been waiting for this for like you know as, as far back as I can remember. Yeah, I've uh, I mean I've always thought it was a cool concept. I don't think I've ever. I mean I I was always one of those people that when I heard about it, I was like oh yeah that'd be cool to try. But I never really 
you know, thought about it and in, like intensely, like I, I want this to happen. I need this to happen type thing. I mean, maybe that's all that, which is weird because that kind of, you know, you would think with the type of person that I am, the, the largely introvert who likes to be a hermit, <laughs> you would think that this would be the perfect thing for me. It's like, oh, I can, you know, I can pretend to be in the real world without actually having to go there. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's definitely interesting. I mean, I can, I can see the, you know, I- I- integrating it specifically into like the social media settings. I, I could see that uh, turning out really badly. <laughs> you know, I could see a lot more people. It's. I think it's an inevitability. Yeah. Oh no, one. I'm not. I'm not denying that. But I'm saying, I like the first picture I have in my head is a lot more trips to the hospital because people getting so mad because they they forget that they can't actually hit the person that's not in front of them as they're having this argument now and they go to lash out and they end up punching a wall or a door or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or or it's going to make everything much more personal because it's going to be your voice and your face saying it, you know. So well, you're not yeah. going to be like, you know, fuck you, you, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, on one hand. But, you know, as we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, wh- I, I wonder if that would impact the type of discourse that people have. Because currently with the, the setup, even if, you know, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, even if you have your you know even if you're using your own name on social media and stuff like that and you're interacting with people there's still a certain level of maybe not necessarily anonymity but a a certain level of disconnection where people feel more emboldened to say certain things that they likely wouldn't say to these people's faces i wonder if adding those extra personal touches even though you're still physically removed from the person i wonder if that will alter people's how they how, how the discourse pro- progresses from there because it's more personal because you can actually see the so, person's reactions like do you guys think that we like it would negative you know if it would de- you know decrease that type of behavior or increase it i don't know did you have you did you you weren't a real big online video game player right like no. versus other people no okay. it's not my thing like so i played counter-strike for a large majority of my life, probably 15 years. Uh, that game behaves so much more differently than games because it was one of the first games that had voice chat on it. It's so much more real. And people don't talk like, you know, people that are just overtly just trolling or whatever, they just get muted immediately. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's much harder to find that sarcasm in somebody, they have to be a much more sincere person uh, when that voice chat is in, in, enabled. It'd be like if everyone that was getting into every Facebook, it was like that blab thing that popped up. You know, like if everyone was popping in and listening to the voices and the sincerity, like, hey, I'm not just trying to troll or shit post or whatever. Like, I truly want to talk about something here. Uh, that's going to be a little different. You're right, man. That's going to really change the way social media because it's so. It feels so cold right now, you know, and it feels well. It doesn't so feel. It doesn't sometimes. really feel real, right? And that's what uh, Jeremy was talking about with that level of disconnect between, uh, you know, reality where you inhabit the real world and what you do online. Um, and mm-hmm. even if there is still going to be that 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 virtual buffer, that digital buffer, it's at least going to take you, you know, five steps closer to the real thing, and you'll actually be able to interact with people face to face. So I think it's going to have a significant yeah. impact on how. how people relate to each other and i think there is going to be a lot of self-censoring it's not going to be you know it's not going to be the crap show that 90 percent of facebook is right now i think it's going to be a little bit different and i think people are going to be a little bit more reserved i i mean I, of course that's just my opinion but I, I think uh just you know being put in a position where you're for all intents and purposes interacting with another human being and you can see that interaction makes an enormous impact there's gonna be a lot more famous people when that, when, you know, because that uh, a writer can only really be so famous, in my opinion. I think once you add that human emotion of the the voice and the emotion behind what you're saying, it uh, lets the person connect a little bit different. Uh, well, you, that's you why great that. authors have a have a specific voice that you actually read their stories. And uh, it's funny you mm-hmm. mentioned that because we were having a discussion on the writer's block about that uh, two days ago. I want to say uh, talk about the uh, the author's voice. Huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know, right? But uh, you know, you, and you're absolutely right. Um, uh, the only reason I wanted to mention that is because uh, if uh, really, really well written literature, 
Um, well, even not even necessarily well-written literature, but uh, authors that are very, very comfortable in their craft, they have a way of communicating their thoughts in their own voice, if that makes sense. Like when you read it, yeah. it's not you're not just reading words on a page. It's like you're reading words being spoken to you. By yeah, I was reading a like Tom God Woods telling book you a story. That, like last year, and that's <laughs> I was reading it in his voice the whole time. Oh yeah, I know, right? Because it's it, he has a very distinctive way of conveying ideas. It's the, you, you, like you you recognize it immediately. Well, yeah, but, uh, but I, I was like, a, yeah, I think so. Uh, good news, everyone! It's like anytime I read that, that's like all I hear. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I, I I mean I understand what you're saying, but I think that's a little different than where where Andre started that point on because I mean Tom Woods is somebody that we've all and plenty of other people have actually heard speak regularly. So it's quite easy to mm -hmm. hear, like, read his stuff in his voice. I think, well, I mean, at least when I hear that phrase, what you were talking about, Andre, is like you're talking about writers who you may not even necessarily ever hear them speak. So you may not know, but they, the writing style itself is actually in a particular voice, right? That's yeah, it's, kinda... it, it, it gives this impression that somebody's telling you the story. You're not reading it on a page. It's like somebody's yes. sitting there and telling it to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing mm -hmm. that you know. I you know, even I I mean I've done the same thing pl plenty of times with reading books and stuff like that. Obviously, especially fiction where you give you know certain characters get their own voices. You just like you you connect this voice in your head like that's when you, you know you just yeah, you yeah, imagine that's what it's going to sound like. Yeah. So okay, voices in the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, voices voices <laughs> in the head. Everybody you know we everybody has that problem right? Not just me. I love my voices <laughs> in my head. They're good. They're good. They're entertaining. Did, did your, Hours did, of entertainment. Did your Smeagol sound as good as mine? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I suspect not. I suspect it wasn't quite as good. In I, mean, my I don't eyes. think anybody's going to compare to co compare to Andy Circus, but uh, you, know, you know, here's the funny thing. Like, I don't know if you guys got to read the Lord of the Rings uh, before watching the movies. I read, I read the Hobbit. Did, did I, that was I, that was the only one I read. I never dude, read the Lord of the Rings. I, I, re I read the I read the books probably two decades before the movies. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. Well, I, the, nonetheless, did did a lot of the characters in the books match up like with the voices and the the picture you had in your head of them? Like, how do you think? Do you think Peter Jackson did a good job? Like, I, I know this is like totally unrelated to the conversation. As far as as, as far, far as Gandalf goes. 100 oh he nailed Gandalf. I, he, he no, nailed yeah. it ian mckellen was the the best actor that he could have picked for that role and it was i mean it was done so fantastically saruman so fantastically as well, well. was nailed yeah yeah saruman was great too um as far as bilbo baggins goes i want to say god what was the actor's name who did it in the uh the the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Elijah. Didn't he? Didn't he? No, no, not oh, Elijah. Wood, not uh, uh, yeah, not I, Frodo Baggins. Bilbo. Bilbo. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I don't even remember. I don't know his name. I don't even remember. You, but you know who I'm talking about, yeah. right? Yes. It wasn't when the I had guy from Sherlock that did the new one. No, 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 no. When I had Bilbo Baggins pictured in my head, it was that guy portraying him. A little bit younger, but definitely him. So I think that casting choice was done very, very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he nailed it. The dwarves in uh, the Hobbit, the new Hobbit he trilogy. He nailed those too. Yeah, he really did. I think he did a fantastic, uh, fantastic yeah, and job. He, he didn't make him feel so goofy. Saw those. You know, I just realized that. I was trying to think. I thought I may, might have seen the first, the first part. I haven't watched the last one. It's, I'm saving it's it for three a rainy movies day. that really could have been like two. I, I don't yeah I'm trying to think uh, I think I think I may have made it to the I, first I one and never made it back to, to two and three or I may not even made it to, to one I don't remember which is weird because I've actually to different things incorrectly in the second one that's the my only thing I don't know I, I I'm somebody who even uh, sat through yeah it. yeah I mean I'll give you that yeah yeah that, I kind of got that same impression yeah I wouldn't know like, I, I, I don't know yeah. it's it's been a while since I've read the book but uh I was I think I think Peter Jackson but just the whole voice in the the book go into the movie that just it's wild how how well he did match up a lot of those things man that's crazy he, yeah Gandalf, and there's, there's right, a lot of couldn't yeah there were a ton of visual cues that were just they were like lifted from the page and it was like I was reading the book yeah. again so that was a really just fantastic oh, experience I wish Tolkien smog would have been especially the way smog yeah. was was uh portrayed was fantastic and of course, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. I will. I will give him all the props <laughs> in the world for pulling that voice off. I was very, very impressed. 
He's yeah. kind of amazing. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> kind of a name is Cumberbatch. Uh, There's no telling. A highfalutin name. There is no telling. Uh, He's the British. So what's people. the Bitcoins at what? 15K now? It's not. It really hasn't moved up or down. What's the deal with that? I think it's. You want to give me the skinny on that? It might be closer to 14. I haven't really looked. It's I, It's been hovering between like four, between like 14.5 and 15.5, somewhere in that area. So it's been kind of going up and down, and sometimes it'll dip to like all the way down to 14. So I got down to like 13.9 at one point, but uh, uh, I've, I've seen oof, even lower. It is 13 right now. Yeah, I was no, it's 14.6. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I've actually been I've been tracking it more. Well, I've been tracking a lot of crypt, tracking a lot of cryptos over the past week or so because I was telling you guys before the show I was I was finally trying to get rid of all my uh, or at least most of my BIP coins because they they had actually spiked up to like nine or ten, oh, like I think nine cents a week or two ago. But I, mm-hmm. I I took too long getting up getting uh getting mine on the exchange, and it re- unfortunately like the volume that gets moved on there because Chris Crypt- Cryptopia is the only exchange that it currently uh you know has BIP listed on it, and you can only you know you can only trade them straight up for either Bitcoin or Litecoin I think. So and the the volume is just so. I hope ridiculous. you went Litecoin. <laughs> Well, no, because I actually oh. I was I was actually getting better deals on uh, I was I was getting a better deal on Bitcoin, and my whole my whole entire purpose with doing that was because I was I wanted to I immediately wanted to exchange the Bitcoin for something else. I didn't want to hold the Bitcoin because uh, uh, I don't I don't want to have to deal with any of the transaction fees or anything like that. But because I was doing that, and because it took me I think almost a week to sell all of them, because the, there's like the transactions just are zero, not flowing. Zero volume, yeah. Yeah, the vo- the volume's horrible, and you know maybe ten. I think the most I saw in one day might have been twenty trades in a day, and that was the last day I was involved because somebody finally came in and started buying all the stuff, even the stuff I had listed at higher prices. So I actually helped cause the Bitcoin price to rise almost up to six cents again. <laughs> with uh my Sweet. efforts over, with my efforts over a week but because of that i ended up tracking all the cryptos uh because i finally set up one of those portfolio things because i had actually been manually cool. ru- running the numbers on my head in my head this whole time <laughs> trying to figure out what my portfolio is at and i'm just like you're an idiot there's all these different websites that give <laughs> this give this service to you for free why don't you take advantage of it <laughs> That's one of the things I like about Bittrex because it it compiles your entire like all of the wallets that you have stuff in. It compiles everything together and lets you know uh, where you're. Oh at. well, Coinami does that for me too, but that's not where I have like I don't I no longer have all of my stuff in Coinami like I used to. <laughs> you know now it's now it's been spread yeah, I've out. I've got a few. Uh, it's been put on hardware wallets. I've got and a stuff. few paper wallets I've deposited into lately. So just to. Uh, Oh, speaking of, the, of crypto, uh, so good news. I can use Kraken now. I used to not be able to. It was about, uh, I want to say, four months well, ago look, when crack I tried. Crack is whack, Andre. Okay. What's your point? You don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see try walk oh, a mile of my shit. Yeah, Kraken. What's Kraken? <laughs> What's Kraken? What's Kraken? More like it. No, um, it's uh instead of using Coinbase because I can't stand Coinbase. I really can. Coinbase just of course bothers the shit out horrible. of me. Um, Kraken is another one of those ones where you can you you can either take in or take a, or put in or take out fiat to crypto. Um, so I've been trying to look for other exchanges. We talked about this the other show uh, talking about a VPN, uh, but thankfully I don't have to do that now because Kraken now allows me to verify my account even though i'm in alabama so i can use it now which means I, i'm not stuck with coinbase anymore fucking finally well there you go the, yay the, the market is oh, finally answered thank, your call thank the lord <laughs> thank the lord there is a light at the end of the tunnel yeah well well i think i'm i think i'm lo- that's until trump drops the hammer and comes after the bitcoiners drops the I'm hammer kidding. Well, they're they're trying I keep to. hearing that all those people say that that they're going to do something. No, I don't, they can't. Well, no, they're it's already all smoking fucking mirrors. They're, well, they're they're they can't. They're trying to and they're going to be able to. I mean, if they've already if as long as the one decision uh with with Coinbase holds up and they are actually forced to hand over however many, you know, however many people's information based on the amount of trading they did. You know, if if that door is officially opened, then they will continue to push. 
they will continue to try to find ways in. Of course. And, you know, unfortunately, regardless of our personal feelings about Coinbase, it is still like the biggest exchange out there. It's the one, you know, as we've mentioned before, it's the one name that just about everybody, even the newbiest noob of, of crypt in crypto, seems to know that name. So it definitely has brand, you know, it has brand recognition beyond belief at this point as was far that, as the crypto world goes. Was this bullshit goes. that I heard? What's that? I heard that I don't know, was, was it? Try, trying to f- figure out a way to sue or do something to Coinbase because, you know, there's a certain amount of Bitcoin you can have in your account and then you just can't transfer it. You just, you, you don't have enough to pay the fees. Yes. Um well, yeah, and I think well, that's the, the case for pretty much every exchange. Well, I was going to say, well, not even exchange. It's the same thing for wallets. You know, even yeah. you know, personal yeah, wallets. What they're, what they're saying is, is uh, um, you know, there's a lot of, since these fees have went up, there's a lot of money on here. You know, $20 to, call, to spend $20, you have no money left. There's no reason to even get in that, at that. So you have this situation where there's a lot of people with a lot of money on wallets that they can't do anything with and, they're like, what the hell? But I'm sure they probably signed that away in the terms of the, in agreements. Well, yeah, of course. Because well, I mean, that's that's the thing about the trans. That's the thing about transaction fees is if you only have as much as a the transaction fee costs to pay, then you know obviously it's not going to go anywhere. Or I mean, you could try, but nothing would move anywhere. You'd just be paying Coinbase. So I, you know, that's. I understand why people are complaining about it, but there's nothing to complain about. That's just the nature of the beast. Well, exactly, because even if they, even if that wasn't in the in the contract somewhere, because the because that's a it's that's not a Coinbase problem. That's well, it's a, because that's they a fo- have the private keys, I believe. Yeah, that's but that's a, that. Like yeah, they, but that's something. There's that, a reason. Yeah, but that okay, but that but that that doesn't really change things because that is something that people do know going into the contract with Coinbase that Coinbase will be holding the private keys, so people are fully aware of that going in. So I think that that makes that point. Or rather, moot. they should be. If well, they aren't, they should be. Well, yeah, uh, and I, I think it makes that point moot because then you know, like I said, it's it's not a Coinbase issue. It's it's. If it's not even an issue necessarily at all, you know, maybe you know, maybe it's not a bug, maybe it's a feature, but that's the you know that that's the case for not just Coinbase. I don't know. Well, no, I, I like liken it, it to I liken a, it to pulling money out of an ATM, right? If you only have four dollars in your checking account and you want to pull money out mm-hmm. of the ATM and the ATM fee is four dollars, like, are you going to complain that you can't pull money out of your out of your ATM account? No, I mean you could you could, but you'd sound stupid doing it. Hmm. Or am I, I mean, is that is that incorrect? Or I, I don't know. I just I don't I see like people complaining like, uh, about money one, getting locked up into wallets because transaction fees are too I high. Guess the whole well, idea that one millionth of a Bitcoin could be like, like enough to buy an island eventually or some shit. So it's like you may have five dollars sitting on a Coinbase account right now, but <laughs> that's just right now. Well, yeah, but I mean, if it goes years, up to the point where be, like point zero 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 one Bitcoin is worth, you know, $150, you know, and, and at that point, I really do think that Bitcoin is no longer going to be the preferred medium of transaction just because it's not scalable. But uh, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to be the preferred method regardless. <laughs> I think that's already No, it shifting. could just be like the gold that backs other cryptos. Well, yeah, and that's the yeah, pretty much what I'm getting at. Yeah. Well. What I've been, you know, what I've been saying, but... uh um, I don't. I mean, if if it gets to that point where like you can't divide it down anymore, which I don't think it's ever going to get to that point because you can always divide it into smaller and smaller units, right? I mean, that's. Am I incorrect in saying that? Or I think it's two hundred fifty million times a Bitcoin. So two hundred fifty mil. So you can. Okay. So you can divide one Bitcoin two hundred fifty million times. I believe so. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I I don't see that really being an issue, even if Bitcoin is worth like a million dollars, because you can still subdivide it down. Yeah. And at that point, when you have like point zero 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 eight five Bitcoin in your wallet, you be like, oh sweet, I've got like a you know ten thousand dollars. I'll just uh, you know go ahead and pay the the fifty dollar fee, and we'll be good to go. Well, yeah. yeah. Fifty dollar fee at that point. Who knows what they're going to be? Because <laughs> the fees have been kind of insane. I saw. I, I. I mean, I don't know how accurate it was, but I saw. I think it was Berwick posted something the other day 
about trying to move an entire Bitcoin. And according to the, the screenshot that he showed, they wanted $1,900. That had to have been a glitch. Wow. That's that what had I've, to have been that's a glitch. What I, know that, I, thought, I know that... that I don't. Yeah, that the. I I don't think that's correct. I, I I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't think so either. I mean, I I because I mean, I I I know. We, I mean, we talked about this recently too. I think that you know the the cost of the transaction depends on how many or the the fee the mining fee. I think actually has something to do with mm-hmm. how many transactions you've actually made with that particular Bitcoin to start with. So yeah. I, I know it. I know it can be increased, and if somebody uses their wallet constantly, I guess technically it could go up. But yeah, that did seem completely insane. I mean, that was you know. Well, I know somebody. Somebody mentioned that. Uh, I don't know if it was on the show or if it was just to me personally. I can't remember, but uh, something about uh, they had something similar happen, but it was just the, the exchange was like freaking the fuck out. Um, and it mm-hmm. was you know it was just a, a glitch in the system. My coins and are then still they tied went up. And do it again, and it was fine. I mean, it was still expensive, but it wasn't, you know, the cost of one Bitcoin expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he, Pay he, a Bitcoin to move a Bitcoin. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, at, yeah, no at, at, at $1,900, I mean, even at its peak, that was a tenth of a Bitcoin. That's a hell of a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I yeah, figured I there's something up with that. Yeah, that's a lot. Although, uh, as you know, the, the other thing that. I mean, I've seen talked about a little bit lately, although I, I know a lot of people, especially the, the huge Bitcoin cash supporters, cont- continue to shit on this point. But I haven't had an issue with it. If you're using a, a SegWit wallet instead of one of the legacy wallets, then the transactions actually go a lot quicker and the fees are cheaper. And it's just yeah, a, way it's, cheaper. it's a matter that people have an ad- not enough people have adopted using the SegWit wallets. But like, because I keep seeing all which these is, people- Which is why. Yeah, because I, but I keep seeing like all these people complaining, and I'm like, I moved like a couple of weeks ago. I moved a couple of Bitcoin at one time, and it was a fifty dollar transaction for the whole thing, and yeah, it was done. And and I cho- I actually chose the slowest transaction, you know, the cheapest one. Still was done in under an hour. I think forty five minutes, maybe. You know, so I had you know I had full confirmation in forty five minutes, and it you know it cost me fifty bucks, and I was like, all right, I can deal with that. I think it's just noobs getting tricked into doing stuff, and then get you know they're like, what the hell is this? I'm not calling Jeff Berwick a noob or whatever. He, I don't know. We were talking about a glitch or whatever. I'm talking about these people that are cr- crying about exorbitant transaction fees, like. Well, the, no, no, well, no. That segment. To, to, to be fair, there are certain wallets that don't allow you the option to choose; they just have a default. And a lot of times, unfortunately, those defaults are like the highest fees because they're designed for people who want to get quick transactions who don't even like, you know, and they may, they might be noob, sure, because they're not questioning it. Oh, why is, why do I get the quickest transaction like that? You know, there are wallets like that that don't give you that option, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So it's not, I don't think it's necessarily all people that aren't, you know, are, are, are not aware of what they're doing. I think some people, because I know plenty of people that have complained about it that didn't want to. They just, it was, you know, for whatever reason, they had to move the Bitcoin, you know, whether they had to sell it because they needed some cash or whatever, you know, and people who know full well how this, how all this stuff works were still ended up because I guess it was just the position that they were in. Like the, if the wallet's already in someplace that doesn't give you that option, or if it's in a legacy wallet to begin with, you know, what are you going to do? You got to move it. You're going to have to deal with that. But it is something that's unfortunately turning a lot of people off to the to that particular technology, and a lot, you know, that's why all the Bitcoin hate is out there, which is unfortunate. Because unfortunately, again, just like Coinbase being the most recognized name in exchanges, Bitcoin is still the most recognized name name in cryptocurrency, and yeah, it's going to, it's going to stay that way for, for the foreseeable future, no matter how good some of these other coins do. I mean, you know, things like you know, Ripple's been on a freaking tear lately. I think it got up almost a, up to a buck fifty, uh, which is pretty insane, <laughs> all things considered. Because you know, there there is, the, the, you know, I've got to get some XRP. I keep forgetting. Yeah, man. I, I highly suggest people. I get got my on hands that. on some. I'm holding. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would highly suggest forty five Ripple. Because e- even though they, What's, does anybody know a good Android wallet for XRP? I don't. No, I don't. I don't keep, ask me. I keep one. I keep mine on a hardware wallet. Well, that's when it's going to blow up. 
Well, it it that that one will most likely blow up if the if the ever circulating rumors are true and it finally does get uh, announced on Coinbase. If that happens in a couple of weeks, like which is heavily heavily rumored, then it's going to explode momentarily until enough people realize there's not enough options to, of where to safely keep them currently because sure plenty of noobs will mm-hmm. jump on it once it hits coinbase just like the explosion of bitcoin cash happened when it hit coinbase there's going to be a huge you know huge amount of volume moved in a hurry um, but number one ripple you know ripple labs the what the one who's i guess in you know in charge of the whole pro- in charge of that whole project i mean their stated their stated goal this entire time was to create a stable currency so like they've met, let it be known that they're not go there you know at, as you know as far as they could be taken at their word as far as anybody could be taken at their word i, I guess that is they uh, you know their whole their whole intention is they don't they're not going <laughs> to let the price skyrocket because once it starts the moon like so many people are dying to hope that it has like the people that have been in since it was below 20 cents uh, they, you know, they have a whole bunch sitting in reserves because you can't mine Ripple. They're just sitting on a bunch of it, and they're going to dump it into the market every time they need to to keep the price stabilized so it doesn't continue to climb out, out of control. So I, I think a lot of people may get in and then freak out about that. And but also once they get in and then realize there aren't a lot of good options, or the noobs who just go, "Oh, here's a, here's an you know here look at this, I can get something for the Play Store." It says it's a Ripple wallet, and me and they put it all in, and the next day they go look, and it's all been got, it's all been taken because well, these were you know bullshit wallets that people just threw up there, uh, hoping to take advantage of noobs. Yeah, I, I think that's going to throw a lot of people off. But you know, I, I think right now it, it definitely has possibly the most potential out of any coin you know other than obviously you know as we've talked about a bunch of times i'm i'm still huge i'm still really big on monero um even though they're having their own xmr baby yeah they're they're having their own issues with uh with fees and stuff nowhere near the uh, level of bitcoin but they're still a little high although there are promises of uh, i guess i guess it's the bulletproof protocol that's coming on the pike for them. That's a, that's supposed to uh, drop their f- transaction times and fees by eighty percent. I think is the uh, the nice. stated goal, which will still put it which will still put it above uh, Bitcoin Cash. I think Bitcoin Cash will still be cheaper at that point, um, but it's going to be a huge. It's going to narrow the gap, you know, hugely. And can and st- since it is still one of the most highly regarded, if not the most highly regarded by most people, uh, privacy coin. Uh, I think that's going to, you know, have a huge, huge impact on, on, uh, you know, on, on, on the whole project. And I definitely think it's going to help the price, which is good for anybody who gets in. And even now Monero, I mean, Monero has been on sale for the past couple of days. It dipped almost all the way down to 300 again. So, uh, still not too late to get in on that one either folks. Monero. Yeah. I hear you can still mine that one. Yes. Profitably. I, I, I am still mining Monero allegedly. I'm not getting anywhere near what I was when I started, obviously, because the difficulty has continued to rise. Uh, there was some hope that once Nice Hash got up and running again, which they have, and I was actually surprised. I don't know if you guys followed that story through, but not only did Nice Hash, nice hash after that, you know, alleged hack that happened a couple of weeks ago, where they lost, I think, something ridiculous like seventy-five million dollars worth of Bitcoin, or maybe it was thirty-something million, whatever it was, it was a big number. Not only did they get it back up and running again, but they posted an official they made an official official press release that said they were giving everybody their money they were going to get everybody their money back or their quote that's their, impressive their, yeah they're they were going to everybody get, get their bitcoin back yeah that was i was like wow like i kept i kept making jokes about the hack and going yeah of course they, they fucking stole it it was a you know it was a pump and dump thing well not you know they basically just ripped everybody off but that's pretty bold so i might have been wrong about them <laughs> But the hope was uh, there was there was rumbles that the hope was when people went back to if if night nice hash did get up and running again and everybody jumped back on that that it might uh, help with the difficulty in the Monero mining. Unfortunately, once crypt once it got back up and running again, the number one nice hash uh, program that's running is the Crypto Night one, which is what Monero runs on. So. <laughs> It's still, it's still the Monero market still all fucked with that. The difficulty still all fucked because all these people involved in it, unfortunately. So yeah, difficulty continues to increase. Hash power continues to de- decrease by the day. Uh, un- you know, in- unless I can get some more graphics cards over here, stat, 
which is not looking very good at the moment because the prices are just insane right now on the the Vegas 64s and 56s. Because on top of the fact that they've been selling out before they can even make it to the stores for the past month or so, uh, basically mm-hmm. like a week after I bought mine originally, <laughs> they've already discontinued a bunch of them. And they're coming out with newer models that are going to be slightly improved, but of course they're going to cost more money, you know, original retail is going to be even higher to start with but the ones that are available right now man i mean they are going for like if you go to amazon and search these things they're not available through amazon anymore although i almost had a couple today at a slightly increased price because momentarily when i checked it said uh out of stock will be back in on january 5th place your order now and i went to go do it but by the time i actually went to make the order they were gone (laughs) Like, that's how quickly they actually sold out. Uh, Even though I don't necessarily have the money, I was willing to throw a little bit more on my credit card and just say, screw it. If I can actually get two of these things, even if it takes me another week or two, whatever. If I can lock them down now, I'll do it. And uh, yeah, they were gone already. But if you go to Amazon, they're listing on like the third party sellers through Amazon, like $11, $12, $1,300 per card. And this is sometimes, uh, even a lot of times for used ones. Like the markup is insane at this point because retail was three ninety nine on these bad boys when they first came out. <laughs> yeah, the sixty fours were four were four were uh, three nine or uh, yeah, I think it was three ninety nine or four ninety nine something like that was the retail on both of them. Oh yeah, I mean people are seeing the writing on the wall, man. They're trying to get in when they can. Yeah, but unfortunately, Monero is going to quickly become not profitable anymore for most people who got into this or who are trying to get into it, which is going to create an interesting situation because some people are going to try to switch to other currencies. Although most of the stuff that is currently more profitable to mine with the, like with these particular cards, I think like Zcash and Ethereum are just slightly more like Ethereum might be a dollar a day more. Zcash might be 75 cents a day more, but all the other ones are either no name coins or, uh, you know, pretty low level stuff that may take off, may not, uh, you know, you might be able, if you're, if you're able to mine enough and turn around and exchange them for something else that you can, you know, that, that you, that you have a broader range of options with, if you can do that quick enough, you might be able to make money. But a lot of these things, unfortunately, like, you know, a lot of people were high on mining. What is it? Electronium. Is that, I think that's one of, one of the newer ones. Yeah. I saw that one. Um, which, you know, may never go anywhere and then all these people sure i mind a whole bunch of this crap but then you end up like somebody like me who has like you know thousands and thousands of bitcoins that you know the high water mark except for one blip early on when uh when another coin got listed and tried to hijack bips uh whatchamacallit moniker and people got confused for like eight hours and the price spiked to like a dollar. Aside from that, Bitcoin, I don't, <laughs> I don't think Bitcoin ever got higher than 10 cents. And, the, you know, the recent surge up to nine was like the highest it had been since that last, you know, freak surge a year ago. You know, so if you end up it with a It looks ton- like Toast Wallet is the best wallet for Ripple. That, yeah, mm-hmm. I have seen people talk about that one, the Toast Wallet. I do not personally use that. Like I said, the, whatever XRP I was able to obtain, I have on a hard well, hardware wallet because I didn't intend that. You know, I was just planning. The only on low ratings anyway. it has on the, the store are people that don't know how to secure their account correctly. <laughs> I nice. forgot my phrase. Nice. Oh, they forgot their seed or their yeah, password. So. Uh, well, either, either way. Well, that's their own fault. I don't. I, I don't. Yeah, uh, it, that shouldn't you shouldn't be <laughs> giving a, an app a one star on your fault. You know that's that's so, oh well, so it's, stupid. Yeah, but that goes back to what we were. That actually kind of ties back into what we were talking about earlier with the, you know the level of discourse with people and how people are so quick to just call somebody name rather than have a discussion. You see that type of stuff all the time too, where people you know look what happened to me. You know, if we're going to go full circle and go back to what we were supposed to talk, we were originally going to talk about like the whole year in review thing. You know, how many people went and uh, gave gave my business bad reviews and like either ma- either straight made stuff up that I, you know, claimed that I did things with their dog, even though they were never clients of mine or just went and bashed yeah. the shit out of me when it had nothing to do with my business. But that's people's mentality. I saw so, actually, I saw somebody else post that uh, either yesterday or today. So, something about the same same type of thing, like how messed up it is that 
you know, just because you're you're angry about something else completely unrelated that you'll actually take the time to go to somebody's business page and give them a negative review and whether you're, you know, whether they're lying or just like bashing you. In either case, like the fact that you'll actually go to that level just tells you how, you know, the people's overall mindset and uh, how messed up people could be that they're just, that there's that much vitriol that they would just want to, you know, it's not, it's not good enough to yell at you on social media or, yeah. you know, or, or, or even say they something to, to your face. destroy your life. Well, exactly. So that's it. You know, that, that doesn't it's like, surprise man, me. This is an opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, but you know, the, the, the type of people that'll do, well, that, I mean, uh, I, throwing comics from a helicopter is not an opinion, but <laughs> Well, yeah, but, but uh, people, well, I mean, you know, state workers being parasites is definitely an opinion. And it's a valid opinion, in my opinion. Well, yeah, but not everybody feels that way, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, but so people, you know, the the same people that are quick to write those write those bad reviews, uh, whether it's whether they're just being uh, bastards because of some other situation or through their own incompetence, like you're talking about with these reviews on the Toast Wallet. Those are the same type of people that we were also talking about earlier with like that, you know, just that the shortened attention span and just the whole the whole gimme gimme attitude of, you know, they want everything right away because that's kind of how especially the past couple of generations have been brought but up. I want it now. Well, yeah. And <laughs> to a certain to a certain extent, to, yeah, to a certain extent, it's people being spoiled. But another, you know, to another it really is the culture a lot of people have been brought up in, especially these past couple of generations. Like in certain instances, I find myself, if I can actually have the patience stepping back and actually almost pitying some of these people, it's because like you, you really don't know any better. You know, anybody, anybody who's grown up with the internet in their lives, their entire lives, especially like with the post 2000 internet where the speeds got better and everything was like, you know, everything was like really racing and improving. Like anybody, <laughs> yeah. Like all those people, you know, anybody born in the late '90s and beyond, especially, you know, they really don't know any different. So I find myself at least trying to have a little more sympathy for people like that and going, well, you know, if you don't really know any better, is it necessary? I mean, sure, yes. I, I've made the claim before, and I still will stick to it to a certain extent that in in, the, in this day and age, in the information age, ignorance is a choice. But if your entire culture, if your entire world is built around this, everything on the go, everything at your fingertips instantaneously almost, you can kind of sort of understand, you know, d despite how stupid people might be being by leaving reviews like this and going, this is horrible because I'm in, basically announcing this is horrible because I'm an idiot and I forgot to write this thing down or whatever it is. You can kind of see where, you know, a little bit at least where they're coming from because, you know, that's what they expect. They expect things to work right away and not have to remember anything and just boom, 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 boom. And that's just unfortunately part of the culture we live in right now, you know? Which is why I am a proud of course quasi luddite yeah, and will always be one. The Veruca Salt <laughs> culture. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That should be a new meme. What the Veruca Salt for culture? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good show title. Too. Well, it's like I want it now. You know. Yeah. Well, I think it's a pretty good note to wrap up on. I think. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Just uh, now that you mentioned that, I looked at the clock. Probably, probably a good time to get wrapping up. We said we were going to keep it short tonight. So, yeah, this was our uh, this was our yearly wrap up show, first of its kind here at the Seeds of Liberty. Uh, I don't know what exactly Not much different from most other shows, but uh, you know, I, I was going to say I don't know what exactly we wrapped up, but hey, we gave it a shot. So, uh, anything else you guys want to hey, say? I'll wrap it up at the in, end in, of in, 2017. I'll wrap it up. Okay, uh, Trump won the election, and then the entire world didn't fall apart. Uh, Hillary's about to get uh, locked up, and uh, yeah, that's about it. England uh, left the rest the of the year was the the rest of the year was inconsequential. <laughs> uh, All right, I, I think yeah, it's our taxes are lower. Damn it! Allegedly, <laughs> my allegedly taxes will be lower. We'll see. Right. Woohoo! Double deduction. But anyway. <laughs> And double deductions for this and losing, <laughs> losing a bunch in, in other areas. Yeah, yeehaw. Good stuff. Anyway, yeah, actually, yeah. The, I, but, but, since, since you guys brought that up, the, I haven't paid much attention to that. But the one thing I caught to, in the past two days was yesterday there was a bunch of articles stating that 
a bunch of people were rushing to pay their property taxes before the turn of the year because there was going to be a loophole in the new provision that you know property taxes are no longer deductible, I guess, as part of the new tax plan. Uh, but there was a loophole that if, if people managed to get them in before the end of the year, uh, but you know before the year actually started, that they would still get credit for it. So a whole bunch of people started racing around to try to get this done, and obviously, most likely spending a decent amount, you know, spending money with their accountants and stuff to try to get all this stuff filled out before the end of the year. And then today, I look, and there's a bunch of bunch of articles all stating, "Oh yeah, the IRS stated that, yeah, even if you manage to do that, if your particular jurisdiction, you know, whatever state, county, whatever it is, hasn't actually done their half of the tax reporting." Before the end of the year, which you know, based on government official they efficiency they overall, won't. we know we won't. Then even <laughs> even if you go through hell no, <laughs> yeah, even if you go through all this trouble, you're still not going to get credit for it. So a whole <laughs> fuck ton of people just <laughs> ran out a day or two after Christmas and tried to and tried to you know and tried to rush their property taxes in so they could get you know take advantage of this uh, tax credit for the last time. Or th- I mean, theft, just theft either credit, way, should we say? But uh, yeah, it, they uh, yeah. The corporate tax alone is is insanity. You know, the the rest of it doesn't even matter. <laughs> the, the the plan could have just changed the corporate ch- tax from thirty six to I think it was nineteen. If if, that, if that's all had it done, that would have been an over. Well, I was gonna say if that's all had it done, yeah. that would have been a tax plan that I actually might have been super excited about for the first time in my life. Like if that's all the tax plan was, so we're just gonna cut this. Just cut this. Nothing else. All right, man. Well, that, go for it. It cut a lot of other stuff too, but but I, I I get what you're saying where there's some weird shit in there. I, her supposedly this is just version one that's coming out, but you know they always say oh yeah, like but, that. We'll, I, we'll see. I'll believe it when I see. Well, it. Exa- that's why I said. Well, I'll, I'll I'll you know that's why I said allegedly when we're talking about you know cheaper taxes because like I said we'll see what actually happens when all this stuff actually gets implemented because unfortunately no matter how good these things always sound even by you know. I can remember as far back as Reagan and his sweet talking about all this stuff. When you actually look at the numbers after the oh, fact, yeah. it's like, Trickle motherfucker, down. he goddamn fucked us. We fell for it again. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. All right. On that note, all I right. guess we'll get closing out. So, gentlemen. So, this has been the Seeds of Liberty. Yes. And uh, it's, been, it's been a good <laughs> year, guys. Uh, Andre, I guess, yeah, you've been officially with, well, we didn't officially announce it, but you've been with us the whole year. So, yeah. Great year, guys. We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We finished. Woo! Yeah. And, oh, uh, Doyle rules. We, uh, we shall be back <laughs> next year with more episodes. Like I said earlier, we're uh, you know coming close to 150. As long as that comment doesn't hit us, I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll try to do something special for that one. But uh, we hope to be able to bring you some more great conversations, some more interesting guests, and we're going to continue to pump out our Patreon stuff and everything else. So for everybody who has listened through this year and pre- you know even before that, thank you so much for continuing to patronize our content uh <laughs> everybody who has continued to donate us thank you so much people who have used our amazon link uh, especially recently during the christmas season really appreciate it uh i know a couple people reached out to me personally and were like i just want to make sure it actually went through man i tried to use your amazon link and uh, i went and checked and we actually got credit for stuff you know i think we have a whopping 15 bucks but hey it's 15 bucks we didn't have before. hell yeah so we will take that Woo! 15 dollars so yes please everybody you know let's like, go play it play some blackjack yeah even even though holidays are over continue you know anybody who's an amazon shopper please continue to use our amazon link we really appreciate it um uh, our patreon uh, there's another episode. i really should set my amazon up to be on our link uh you'll probably such a dummy you'll, you'll probably get a uh, ban like i did like you can't i don't you know, like they'll, they'll figure out that we're connected somehow like you know originally they blocked michael dean and a bunch of other people from being able to use our service or our affiliate link, rather. But anyway, so yeah, uh, more Patreon content wow. will be coming out soon. I think I put out two episodes last week. Uh, I got another one or two that I'm going to try to put out before New Year's. Uh, actually, so that'll hopefully be out before this episode actually comes out. And through our links, you can find, you know, through the show notes, you can find every other way to donate to us if you want to. If you're, you know, we talk about cryptos a lot, especially this last half of the year. You want to donate cryptos, we take a bunch of them. So yes. Anybody who uh, is interested in helping us out, plenty of ways to do so. And of course, the easiest way to help us out is just continue to like, comment, and share on our posts and all the stuff we put out. So thank you, everybody, for a great year. Well, mostly great year. Ah, whatever. I'm still alive. It's pretty great. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> That's right. 
we will uh, every day is great we'll, we'll catch you next year man so this has been the seas of liberty podcast all of our information can be found at solpodcast.org and we'll catch you next year peace peace in the middle east 2018 fuck you 2012 wait what The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com.